Welcome to the Gun Channel, my name is Mike. A portion of today's video is sponsored by CloseQuartersCarry.com, but more about that later. I'm in the process of doing a review on the TLR7 Sub and doing some direct comparisons to the TLR6. This is a quick update to hold you over until we come out with the definitive full review. If you follow the channel, you may have seen a slight wiggle problem I had with the TLR7 Sub on my P365XL. Um, you'll see a little bit of that in the holster review I did last month. I'll leave a link below. If you have this problem, just email them over at service at streamlight.com and let them know that you are an earlier adopter, aka a pre-order customer, and they will send you out another bracket. So good on Streamlight for that. That's nice. In the meantime, I was able to get a great first impression of this light and I have been using it some. For the most part, I'm just going to compare the TLR6 to the TLR7 Sub as I know most of you are debating between these two lights as your first option or maybe if you should upgrade from the 6 to the 7 Sub. Let's hit a couple of comparison notes in case you're not familiar with these two lights. This particular weapon light will need to be ordered for your particular subcompact gun. So be mindful during ordering and you don't order the wrong one. I'm aware of the Hellcat, the P365XL, the SIG, and also the Glock variant. So the TLR6 offers 100 lumens versus the TLR7 Sub, which offers 500 lumens. Now I would imagine for many of you, this is the biggest reason you're debating between these two lights uh, and possibly upgrading. I will say the 500 lumens is definitely preferred, but the 100 lumens still gets the job done at very close range and also in a very dark indoor situation in your home, for example. The TLR6 comes with these little dinky batteries, the CR1-3N, whatever the hell that is. I really don't like them, but you can order a gaggle of them online for pretty cheap. And with those little dinky batteries in that 6, you're gonna... Hey, it's trash day. Can you guys hear that? Home studios, am I right, guys? And with those little dinky batteries, in my experience, you'll get about five to 10 minutes of constant runtime before you start to see a light fade. The 7 Sub has a much more hardy battery with the CR123A lithium type battery. Streamlight's website declares that the runtime on that battery will be 1.5 hours. And that brings you into that 500 lumen, 5,000 candela peak beam intensity. So the battery increase is much appreciated. Um, however, it does come in at a slightly bigger, uh, slightly bulkier and a little bit more weight. Not much, but it's something to note. Now, as far as mounting goes, the 6 is more of a semi-permanent mount. It takes three screws, the whole thing's kind of a kind of a little bit dramatic, right? The, the, the guts fall out of it, there's electronics exposed. It's not a big deal, but uh, in the link below, I have a full uh, review on that whole experience I had with that. But in short, if you're gonna have the TLR6 on your gun, you're gonna wanna install it and leave it. Moving over to the TLR7 sub, that one is screwed on in more of a traditional way, and you can use a coin, a flathead screwdriver, or even the back of your nine millimeter casing to get that guy on and off. And so if that's important to you, the 7 Sub is gonna be your choice for sure. Holster availability for the TLR6 is gonna be pretty good because that's gonna be, the, that weapon light's been out for a little bit longer. The 7 Sub at the time of this video hasn't been out quite as long. However, we're in luck because our sponsor for today's video is CloseQuartersCarry.com. CQC holsters are for everybody, everyday carry, competition, custom-made holsters, fast turnaround, proud sponsor of the Patriot Games, and they ship worldwide. And be sure to save 12% by using the promo code THEGUNCHANNELPATRIOT. Hey, I'm just editing and I wanted to give you my initial experience of what led me to CQC. I initially reached out to some other companies to try to get a holster and they were months out, like six to eight months if I'm not mistaken. And I reached out to CQC and they were like weeks out. There's no extra charge to send your light into him and he will um, mount that up to your weapon in the shop and custom make your holster so if you have a light on your weapon there's a pretty good chance they make a holster for it already and if not they can do it customized for no extra charge all the metal washers and stuff that might have colors to them there's no extra upcharge for that and i think like kydex is only like a five dollar upcharge at least at the time of this video for like other crazy colors i'm using this holster now for my daily carry and i'm very happy with it you've probably seen this in an earlier review or if you're a type of person who likes to carry a mag pouch don't forget to throw that in the cart while you're there anyway thank you so much cqc for supporting the channel and coming on board okay back to the lights Comparing these two lights as far as a user experience and intuitiveness, I prefer the 7 Sub. They're both ambidextrous. Lefties won't have a problem out there, so that's nice. You're good to go either way. So if you train with your weapon light in a manner to where you're just going to turn it on as you go to clear a room or work a situation and leave it on, both lights are going to work just fine for you. But if you want to have better control of your weapon light and on and off it, you're gonna have a much more, uh, much more better time. The TLR7 Sub is much more intuitive. 
than the 6, at least in my experience. The button access is great on both. The biggest difference is on the 6, the button actuation is actually more on the side. So you'd be pushing your weapon to the side as you actuated the button. And the 7 sub has more of a down motion here versus a side motion, which I prefer. Both are functional and it really comes down to your style of training. Um, and, if you're trying to, uh, and if you're trying to intuitively match up this particular weapon light to perhaps some of your other weapon lights you already own on your other weapon systems. The TLR6 does come with a laser option as well. So you have the laser, double click both sides and you have a light only. And then you also have light and laser option put together. The TLR7 sub has a single tap stays on, single tap take it off, momentary hold and release, momentary hold and release. And again, that's a little bit more intuitive than the six, at least in my experience. And then it also has a strobe light option and you do some sort of like mortal combat finish mode in order to get that turned on. It's seriously, it's not that hard, but it does have a strobe option if that's something you're into. I currently don't have mine turned on for my particular preferences. If you already have the TLR6, should you upgrade to the TLR7 sub? Well, yes and no. The 7 sub is better in almost every way except for size, weight, and expense or price. You're gonna get a lot more light for the additional weight and bulk, um, but there will be an inconvenience for the transition part of it from getting a new holster, spending the extra money, things like that. If you already have the TLR6 and you're happy with it, don't lose too much sleep over it. Um, but if you're somebody who's going to take full advantage of those 500 lumens, more, to, more intuitive controls, and uh, longer battery life, then the TLR7 sub is probably for you. And I should also mention that some of you viewers let me know that there's a water resistance level difference. So the TLR7 sub has an IPX7 rating, which is waterproof up to one meter underwater for 30 minutes. It's pretty good. The TLR6 has an IPX4 rating, which is just rated from splash from water from any direction. So if that's important to you, the 7 sub is going to be better in wet situations for all you womanizers out there. Because get the ladies wet. If you haven't purchased a light yet, it's hard to make an argument against the 7 sub. The price might be the biggest deciding factor because I know some of you may not have a budget for this. And hell, you can always just leave the weapon light off for now and just get a traditional flashlight for your pocket until you can save up enough money for the 7 sub if that's something you really want. But I'll leave that kind of advice up to you and your instructor and your specific needs because hey, you know you better than I know you. It's probably a quote from Gandhi. I will go ahead and post another video when I get a chance to run this light through a few more night classes to give you my long-term impression and definitive review on it. So be sure and subscribe if you're into that. And be sure to head over to the patriotgames.us to sign up for your next Patriot Games. The next one, I believe, are December 4th and 5th. And if you catch this video at a different time, don't worry, we host several Patriot Games per year. So head over to their website, find a date that works for you, Get signed up, get your butt training so you can stay sharp. And for all your holster and mag pouch needs, head over to closequarterscarries.com and don't forget to use your 12% off promo code using the gun channel Patriot. Sure, that's perfectly good promo code, right? We just made it up on the phone earlier. All right, until then, thanks for hanging out. I really appreciate watching this community grow here on the gun channel. So thank you for everyone who's been supporting the channel from the beginning. My name is Mike. You're at the Gun Channel. We'll see you soon.